Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. This isn't going to be a fun episode. Not for me, not for you. The Maikai, the great Polynesian palace, the destination for tiki files worldwide, is closed and has been put up for sale by its owners. <clears throat> if anyone is familiar with tiki history, um, the Maikai's only real rival in the uh, realm of spectacular tiki meccas was the Kahiki in Columbus, Ohio. And around uh, the turn of the century, uh, the Kahiki was closed and sold off and promises to rebuild and reopen followed and that never happened. Um, the Maikai is in a little bit different situation, but it's still not good and it's still a reason for all of us Tiki Files to have great concern. Let me give you a quick recap of how we got to this position. Um, back in October, the Mai Kai was closed due to COVID as many restaurants were to protect their uh, staff and patrons. At one point, a high pressure water line burst and destroyed a large section of the roof along with the Mai Kai's kitchens. Uh, this would be a devastating blow at any time um, because they had been closed for several months with no revenue streams or very little revenue streams. Uh, it was uh, more difficult. Uh, compounding the problem was the fact that the Mai Kai is a building that is more than 60 years old. Building codes have changed and because of its historical st status, uh, any renovation, rebuilding, the building must be brought up to code. So instead of just patching the roof and replacing some of the ovens, uh, a lot of the wiring, a lot of the plumbing, um, just a tremendous laundry list of building code upgrades are required for them to reopen. Uh, this cost is running into the millions. A number of different quotes have been cited, but uh, Suffice to say, their insurance paid out in the hundreds of thousands and they are going to need several million, at least uh, some figures, cite upwards of seven million. The property values have the three parcels of land the Maikai is built upon worth approximately $4 million and the building itself is valued at around half a million dollars. So you see, this presents quite a difficult situation for the Maikai. Um, right now they are seeking investors, uh, perhaps someone to buy the property outright. Um, Trader Vic's Corporation, if y'all are listening, I think Trader Vic's Maikai has a very nice ring to it. Um, the situation is such that a GoFundMe campaign, which has uh, been a popular solution bandied about online, is not really a solution. GoFundMe campaigns can bring in perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars, but not nearly the amount of money that this is going to require. And this is a shame. We hope that this works out for the Maikai and that it continues on for many, many years to come many decades to come, many centuries to come. But as we saw with the Kahiki in Columbus, Ohio, uh, historic status is no guarantee of a tiki palace to endure. Quick time out, folks. Since I recorded this episode a couple of days ago, the Thornton family, the owners of the Maikai, have come out with a public statement saying that while the situation for the Maikai is serious, uh, it is not as dire as media reports have made it out to be. They are seeking buyers and or investors, but they are committed to preserving the Maikai and ensuring that it continues into the future and doesn't go the way of the late lamented Kahiki. Uh, to that end, they are continuing to sell cocktails to go, batch cocktails from the Mai Kai. They also have planned several events for the coming months to take place in the Mai Kai parking lot. All of these will provide much needed revenue streams to keep the restaurant afloat. 
In the interim, they also have uh, the MyKai gift shop online, which has merchandise for purchase, again, which will directly go to benefit the MyKai and help them out in this time of need. I will have links to all of these down below. Uh, including the Facebook page, Save the Mai Kai and Friends of the Mai Kai. So everything you'll need will be down below in the show notes. So I just wanted to clarify that so we have the most up-to-date information possible. Now back to your regularly scheduled moment of tiki. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to go and visit the Mai Kai several years ago with my family. Um, it was a great deal of fun. It was everything it's cracked up to be. Uh, it is not just a tiki bar. In fact, calling the Mai Kai a tiki bar is unfair to all the other tiki bars in the world because none of them come close to comparing to the Mai Kai. There is a tiki bar in the Mai Kai, the Molokai bar, um, but the tiki, Mai Kai is so much more. There's a tropical garden connected to it, filled with waterfalls and walkways and hundreds of carved tiki statues. Uh, there is the showroom where guests dine on bamboo tables and bamboo chairs with incredible amounts of detail and carvings all around you, uh, with an incredible menu to choose from and an infinite variety, well, not infinite, there's like 64 cocktails on their menu, but a tremendous amount of libations and dining alternatives for you, while a Polynesian show performs on the stage. Polynesian dancers and fire dancers and singers, and it's drummers, it's, it, it's like you're in Hawaii, or like you're in Tahiti, or any of the other tropical paradise islands that tourists so love to flock to in South Florida. The Mai Kai has been employing native performers, hundreds and hundreds of native performers, for more than 60 years. Um, it's a family-owned business. It's very intimate. It's very... Well, words don't do it justice. And to put it in perspective, when I and my wife got into Tiki, our children, uh, three teenagers, uh, rolled their eyes at the whole concept. Tiki bars, Tiki in the backyard, Tiki around our pool. You now that's mom and dad's goofy, nerdy thing. When we went to the Mai Kai, they had to dress up and their eyes got really big. And they were dumbfounded by all the selections and the choices and the fire show and the dancers and the music. It was so overwhelming. And when the evening was finally over, the first thing they said to us as we walked out to the parking lot is, when can we go again? Jaded teenagers in this day and age. Mai Kai has that kind of effect on everyone. So hopefully the Mai Kai will find its angel investors and will reopen soon, bigger and better than ever. <clears throat> But if that does not happen, at least we have this. The Mai Kai, History and Mystery of the Iconic Tiki Restaurant by Tim Swanky Glasner. This book came out several years ago and it is a labor of love. It chronicles the history of the Mai Kai from the earliest days of the Thornton brothers when they decided they were going to build a tropical tiki paradise in South Florida, through all the celebrity patrons that attended from Johnny Carson to you know a host of others. It discusses the mystery girl, the mystery drink, um, how the Thornton brothers poached the number two bartender from Donda Beachcomber in Chicago and the maitre d' and all of Don's employees, not all of them, but they would, they didn't. An interesting fact is that when they were looking to open and filling out their staff for the restaurant, they didn't go after the number one bartender or the number one maitre d' or the number one chef at Don Beachcombers. They went for the number two, the people who were ambitious and looking to 
rise up in the world and make a name for themselves that wouldn't be able to because there was someone of greater renown above them. Uh, it's a really fascinating history. If I have one critique, it gets a little gossipy. Uh, in places, there are times where the information projected, uh, presented is more subjective than objective, and that's understandable. Tim has been a fan of the Maikai for decades. Uh, he runs the Grogalizer, which is a website online that compiles, it's a resource for home bartenders uh, that compiles ingredients and what ingredients can go into different cocktails. He posts tribute recipes to the Mai Kai, famous Mai Kai cocktails. Uh, and it's a labor of love. Um, and this book here is a labor of love. It is lavish. It includes profiles of various dancers and various people who have come through uh, the Mai Kai, various mystery girls, a history of, oh, so many different incarnations of this restaurant. Um, talks about the uh, excitement that the mystery girl caused when she appeared on The Tonight Show. Um, just the dancers and uh, how how the restaurant evolved over time, how the surfboard bar became the uh, uh, gift shop, and then the Molokai bar came to be, how the restaurant at one time had open air seating under the A-frame roof that uh, tropical rains and storms and weather forced them to roof over the entire place so you no longer ate in the gardens. It's just such a fascinating history. And for anyone who has ever been to the Mai Kai, this book is definitely something that you will want to hold on to as a very extensive walk down memory lane, um, a lavish souvenir, if you will. For those who haven't gotten to go to the Mai Kai, this is the closest you can get. Except there is, uh, I believe Google Maps has a walking virtual tour of the Mai Kai that you can point and click and point and click and point and click. Um, even that can't really prepare you for the absolute grandeur of the Mai Kai. Perhaps the cruelest aspect of all of this, if there's, if this is the end of the Mai Kai, there's no opportunity to say goodbye. When, when the Kahiki closed, patrons and fans knew about it months in advance. Uh, they were able to go to the Kahiki to get that last fix, to soak up as much of the ambiance as possible, to pay their respects. When the Kihiki's last day was a giant party, a big festival that people came from across the country, across the world, to say goodbye to this beloved Tiki Palace. That's not happening with the Mai Kai. They can't open, they can't serve food, they can't do what the Kihiki did because the damage to the place is what's causing it to go away. And that's a shame, and that's sad, and that's wrong, and it's unfair. It's unfair to those who know and love the Mai Kai. That's unfair to those who have never gotten to go to the Mai Kai and always wanted to visit it someday. And someday may never come. On the other hand, the Mai Kai isn't gone yet. There's still hope. There are Facebook groups, Friends of the Mai Kai and Save the Mai Kai, that people can join to find out what they can do to help. There are investors out there. Tiki is popular and there is no Tiki destination more popular than the Mai Kai, which is uh, renowned the world over. It is a destination. It is an iconic landmark. It is beloved. 
So on that note, let's raise a glass to the Mai Kai and anyone out there who has it within their power to pitch in to save this piece of Polynesian pop history, we entreat you to do so. And until next time from the Lagoon of Mystery, aloha. Aloha.